On today's episode of Watch Jericho, I tried to put a big old winch on a uh, kind of big old aluminum trailer. What is going on guys? I'm Watch Jericho and today I'm here in the garage with Jake and uh, as you can see, we just got back from Northern Tool. Here you go. Quick run to Northern Tool where I picked up some supplies. Hopefully this is all I need to mount this winch on the trailer with my idea. So here's my idea. We mount this on the front of the trailer. This step bumper uh, receiver hitch that you literally bolt onto the bumper of a truck. Uh, my game plan is to turn it that way so it's pointing straight up and mount it on the front of the trailer. And then we'll take this pedal hitch receiver adapter. Wow, this thing's a monster. Put that into it, point it straight up, and just mount the winch on that plate right there. Also, we got some cheese in here from the taco adventure yesterday. Only $87, and it seems like those are the parts that I need to make this happen. And now we are back from Northern Tool with our parts, and it's time to dig out all of the other parts that just came in from Anvil Off-Road. I thought I was gonna pick this up. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, a winch! Oh. Oh. I feel like Wiley e. Coyote dropping a legit anvil on the Roadrunner right now. Oh, that thing weighs a lot. As you can see here, we've got a that was supposed to come off so I could read it. An Anvil Off-Road 17,000 pound winch. And I'm pretty pumped about it. This is a monster of a winch. Wireless control, uh, a wired control too, I think. And a whole bunch of accessories that are sitting over here. Let's get them out. All right, this stack isn't considerably lighter. I thought it was gonna be, but here we go. Yeah. This is what I'm excited about right here. Aluminum bare lead with black finish. This is gonna be sick. It's gonna make the front of our winch look incredible. So, let's just open all this stuff up because I don't even know what all's in here. This one, I think, says winch accessories or straps. Winch accessory kit. What is in the winch accessory kit? This is sick. It's already like set up in a nice bag and here we go. Oh man, gloves, recovery straps, sick. Man, those are things I needed in my truck. D-rings that are painted. Block and tackle. <laughs> a tackle box. All right, let's put all this stuff back because that's pretty cool and we can store all the winch accessories in there to move around with this thing. Some synthetic rope for the winch. So we need to actually roll the winch all the way out and load it with the synthetic rope because it has metal cable on there. If you guys remember, I almost died at the uh, hand of a cable winch once when uh, we were loading up my tractor, my John Deere 420C crawler and uh, the end snapped off the cable. It's actually, it was bolted on with one of those little uh, U bolt things and that uh, exploded and missed my head by literally inches. Uh, so this is the move because if it explodes, it should just fall to the deck instead of coming by your head at 400 mile an hour and breaking your camera in half. It literally cut the camera in half right where my hand was. All right, let's try to get this thing open. It is legitimately packed. Hey, that worked out really well. Better than I thought. I was excited to switch to this guy. There we go. What? I don't need that other fair lead. I got this baller roller set up. That's sick. <laughs> okay. What else we got here? Ground cable. Wired winch control. A very large hook. What's next? Very large winch. Uh, that's a cool little strap. And uh, the wireless controls. Man, that's cool. It's, got a, ah, it's even got batteries in it. It came right on. Sweet. So now I have to try to lift this out of here without legitimately breaking my back. This winch is gigantic. This is, it may be too much winch for this trailer because this trailer can't hold 17,000 pounds. Uh, that's that's bolted down. So we get to have some fun. Who ready? Here we go. <laughs> it's got corner reinforcement and everything. That is a really 
That's more winch than I expected. What's holding it on there? Three out of four bolts. Oh, cool. That's the exact number of bolts that I asked for. All right, we're gonna pop these zip ties with our zip tie poppers. Yeah, wow. That thing hits hard. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with all this awesome wire rope. That thing is nasty. What a, what a cable. So, free spool. I'm tired. You tired? My arms are my arms are shot. That's a day's work done. Oh man, that cable is rolled up and it weighs a lot. Like the winch is much more uh, accessible now. And uh, we had to pull the bolts out. There's actually a bolt that retains the wire rope or synthetic rope, whichever one you're using. It's a 13 or a half inch. Whew. I'm ready to put the synthetic rope on. This weighs nothing. Yeah, it weighs like two pounds. <laughs> it's so much better. We got ourselves some O'Reilly's power. And uh, now we're just gonna hook up a little bit of that and a little bit of this. All right, let's try the wireless remote just to start with. That's amazing. No configuration or anything. I literally just turned this thing on and hit go. And what a monster. <laughs> Install. <laughs> You've done it. Okay, so we looked at the synthetic rope. It actually has a 22,000 pound capacity. That exceeds the winch's rated capacity. So if I had to guess, we're in good hands. So we're installing the aluminum Fairlead here because it's the one you use for the synthetic rope. Let's uh, throw the impact on here, make it happen with the quickness. Man, this is nice. And the impact's turned all the way down, so. Now for the fun part, we are rolling our synthetic rope back up on here and uh, it's taking quite a while. This is a very long rope. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, the synthetic rope is rated at 22,000 pounds, which actually exceeds the winch's capacity and it's less dangerous. So, here we go, back on it. power and my jump pack is now dead. My jump pack was fully charged when we started this and we're not done. So uh, now we're gonna go ahead and put this gigantic hook on here. So we'll just pull off the uh, cotter pin there, split pin, and load this guy up. We freed the winch from a shipping container and now it is uh, a lot easier to pick up actually. Way, way easier to pick up. Carry and uh, Pretty pumped about that. So now I just need to go throw it in the back of the truck and uh, we need to go fab up the plate. What's really amazing is how much lighter the uh, box is. <laughs> is it? Man, that's impressive. Considerably lighter. All right, I need your engineering stamp of approval here. This is my plan. We mount this on the front of the trailer. Straight up and down. All right. And I think it corresponds pretty well to the front of this thing, so I'll show you the trailer. Put that, yeah. Out. This, the winch will go on that. That way, it faces back towards the truck and sits like flush with the front of the trailer. How are you gonna bolt to the bottom of the winch? You gotta build an adapter plate. I gotta build an adapter plate that comes out a little bit. Okay. Well, we can make an adapter. Yep. So this thing gets its strength from every one of these is a big old ridge that sticks out that far, right? Mm -hmm. So these actually match inside there. So my game plan is to take a piece of bar stock like this long and put one there and one there and then drill into it and then put the bar stock right behind our bolt holes. So that sits right there in the center of both of those. Yeah. And we spread the load out across a section like that. Well, bar stock is not your best bet unless it's pretty heavy. I mean, you could put a... It needs to be like square tubing to yeah. have strength, right? Square tubing would be... Would be just it all depends on how much uh, thickness we have here for well it's not crazy thick it's, out. i mean you can use 
you could use bar stock if you could put a piece of two by two across here. Yes. Uh, it's a piece of two by two square tube, but I would use two by two by like uh, uh, three sixteenths wall or uh, something extremely heavy that was not going to bend because if we spread that load all the way out across here, right. then the load is going to be pushing back. We keep it up as high as possible. We want to be pushing back on these on, on these the deck deck. plates. Yeah. On these deck plates, and so as long as we're pushing back on the deck plates when you're pulling. This this won't this won't pull that back. But exactly. But this is only backed up by a plate that's this big, and we've put like ten thousand pounds on one of these. I mean, we pulled that suburban on with one hook on that. So I don't think I'm ever going to exceed what we did loading that down, and it's never uh, moved. So long as these don't move that way, and you spread the force out along the front, yeah, and you're pushing on, on top of this whole deck, it's going to be very tough to tear the trailer apart. Yeah. And so then, uh, but I would put a. Take a black piece of square tube. It's going to put a lot of weight up here it on is. your tongue, but you got to put a couple of heavy pieces on there, and then put that yep. mount on. Luckily, the only it's, other it's way to do this perfectly flush. Well, that would be the easy way to do it, wouldn't it? Yeah. But that takes out your chances of loading low-profile things. You guys, what we're working with underneath, and we'll get this thing in and out of the wind. There's the tongue itself. There's the front of the trailer. We want to put angle iron or uh, square tubing inside these channels. Two pieces straight across there. All right, I grabbed this piece of two by two by quarter and I put it in here to figure out what our angle of attack lets us install. Obviously, I have to contend with the tongue that runs diagonally across there. Uh, I can get about 41 inches into the trailer, which means we're gonna do 40 so that these come back out if we ever need to. So uh, I went and grabbed some scrap pieces that are 46s or so, and uh, I'm in the middle of cutting them down to make them fit. 40s right inside. While I do that, Jared's out here with his uh, metal blade and his cordless saw cutting the bar stock down. Two 40 inch pieces for me. All right, we have all the metal we need. Now it's time to do uh, a lot of cleaning and a little bit of painting. So the winch came mounted in this giant wooden box that you guys saw. So what we're gonna do is assume all the mounting holes on that box are correct and uh, use that as our template to make our metal adapter that mounts this onto our panel hitch receiver adapter. Uh, this is a terrible decision, it'll work out great. Trying to select a fine specimen of the half inch variety. Up! Up a little! Jared is convinced over here that uh, he's going to just push a button and poke holes in this plate. It's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> and these are our half inch bolts that came with the winch. They're metric. Oh, they are probably metric for sure. It comes with bolts that are threaded into the winch body and then it comes with these where you can slide a nut into the winch body and put this big old bolt in there. We're going for big old bolt because those little ones, eh, who knows, they could pull out or they could pull the threads out of the winch. So, uh, especially with only four bolts in there. So we're gonna go big. All right, all right. This does say it's a muncher of metal. I've never seen this thing run before, so.
out of here. Well, that does look easier than a drill press. That would have taken like four hours on a drill press. So this has uh, insertable nuts that go into the body of the winch here, which it's kind of hard to access at this point. It started. This one just wants to fight. Interesting fact, this what was kind of a cheap panel hitch adapter. I think this was like 30 bucks. It's actually powder coated. It's not just cheap spray paint or something like that. So I just spent the last 40 minutes with the wire wheel grinding all the powder coat off that I just paid good money for. I was gonna bolt this whole thing together and he was like, no, nah, forget it, we'll just weld it. So he's gonna throw a, a bead around this guy for me and then we will spray paint this all black so it looks professional. The bonus is it keeps all the bolt heads out of the winch's uh, spool zone. That's what I was really worried about there. So uh, it'll have a nice flat platform for this thing to roll up on. I see you put your suit on. Just can't get a little warm. Ready to go out for dinner? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to ruin the sensor on this camera or I just record the welding for you guys. There's a chance it could hurt it. Uh, we're not going to take the chance. There's a good shot for welding. <laughs> the powder coat peeling back is hilarious actually. Nice. Super pretty. Hey, <laughs> That's nice. It was on fire. I think we've succeeded. This may be the world's ultimate removable winch mount. I mean, it's just so built. Half inch plate welded onto this giant pedal hitch receiver. And uh, yeah, we got it painted black. Paint's pretty dry. About as dry as it's gonna get for today. And uh, we're ready to bolt this on. It's got a flat washer, a lock washer. Oh, yeah, it's really heavy too. Like, incredibly heavy. Well, I planned on drilling all this out and going ahead and mounting it tonight, because uh, this is the trailer side. But uh, I think this is gonna stay here for the night. That way they can finish this up properly in the morning. Uh, there's such a bend in this and there's really no way to fixture this uh, thing that it's, it's really, it's kind of a struggle drilling out these holes. And that bit is really struggling. So uh, I'd say my half inch drill bit, it might be dead there. So I'm going to leave this here. And when we come back to the trailer, I. I bet it's magically on there. So there you have it, probably the craziest and maybe even the heaviest removable winch that I've ever put on a trailer. It's uh, really exactly what I was thinking. And uh, I love the massive overkill that this mount is. The trailer will probably rip into pieces before uh, that ever comes apart. So hopefully that never happens. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com where you can get cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. If you're wondering what we're gonna do for power, I'm just always gonna carry a battery box, an uh, extra battery in the whatever truck we're using and stick a battery up there on the front. Uh, there's really no other way to do it. It uses a ton of power and maybe the jump box. I brought the jump box along so we could run it. Can't wait to go pick up a car with this setup. It's crazy.